Good management during production is essential to reduce post-harvest disease and insect infestation. Careful harvesting and sorting out damaged or decayed produce before packing can limit the spread of disease. Storage at the lowest safe temperature will slow growth of most fungi and bacteria. In addition to low temperature storages, there are several post-harvest treatments available to help prevent losses caused by pathogens or insects. Hot water dips can reduce the number of fungal spores on crops such as lemons, melons, plums, peaches, papaya, sweet potatoes, and tomatoes. Hot water dips are especially helpful in controlling subsurface fungal infections. Cold treatments are another option for controlling insects on commodities that tolerate low temperature storage. For instance, storing produce for 14 days at 1.7 degrees Celsius or 35 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 days at 0 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit or below, controls fruit flies and other insects on apples, pears, grapefruits, kiwi fruit, and persimmon. For produce packed before cold storage treatment, package vents should be screened to prevent reinfestation by insects during handling. Sodium or potassium bisulfites are used in a sawdust mixture for control of molds on grapes. The mixture is usually enclosed within a pad that is placed inside a container of grapes. On occasions when fungicides must be applied to produce, a tray with holes punched into the bottom can be used to hold the commodity while it's sprayed. Here, bananas are treated with a fungicide solution using a handheld knapsack sprayer to the point of runoff. The bananas can then dry in the perforated tray before further handling. Fungicides must contact a product's entire surface for maximum effectiveness. Proper temperature management is the most important individual factor in maintaining product quality. Keeping a product at its lowest safe temperature during handling, storage, and transport will increase post-harvest life because of lowering respiration rate, reducing water loss, decreasing ethylene production and sensitivity, slowing ripening, and limiting the growth of decay-causing organisms. Several simple practices will enhance cooling. Harvesting early in the morning when products are coolest will reduce the amount of heat that must be removed from harvested crops. Shading the product keeps it cool. Shading all buildings used for packing house operations, cooling storage, and loading transport vehicles also keep the product cool. Insulating cooling and storage rooms and loading areas and painting buildings white or silver further reduce interior heat gain. Cooling involves transferring heat from the product to a source of refrigeration, either mechanical or ice. Produce should be stacked in cold rooms in patterns that allow plenty of air circulation around the product. Room cooling provides the slowest cooling rate and is too slow for more perishable products. The rate of cooling can be increased by installing a ceiling plenum with cone-shaped jets through which air is directed down over stored produce. Forced air cooling pulls cold, moist air through stacks of storage containers, and thus it greatly speeds the rate of cooling for any type of produce. A forced air cooler can be constructed inside a cold room. This, for example, is a fixed unit. If the cost of a fixed unit is too expensive for your operation, a portable forced air cooler can be constructed using a canvas or a thick polyethylene sheet. This unit, for example, is designed to be used inside a refrigerated storage room. Hydrocooling uses cold water to cool products. Water temperature should be maintained at the lowest safe temperature for the products being cooled. Products are either showered with cold water or immersed in cold water in batches. Thorough daily cleaning of hydrocoolers is necessary to prevent harmful buildup of decay-causing organisms. Hydrocooling water should be adequately chlorinated to help control decay. Evaporative cooling can cool products to slightly above the wet bulb temperature of the ambient air. Some evaporative cooling can be achieved by wetting products and allowing the surface water to evaporate. The storage building illustrated here has an evaporative cooler located on the roof. 
Evaporative cooling is particularly useful for cooling chilling sensitive products in warm, dry areas. Forced air cooling with evaporatively cooled air provides even more effective cooling. The water can be collected and recirculated as needed. Night air ventilation is used for cooling bulk products in areas where nighttime temperatures are substantially lower than produce temperatures. The storage facility should be well insulated and vents should be located at ground level. Vents can be opened at night and closed early in the morning. Care should be taken to avoid overcooling or freezing if night air ventilation is used in very cold regions. Package icing is the process of placing ice around or on top of the product inside a package. Icing can be used only with products that tolerate contact with ice, such as carrots, broccoli, radishes, beets, sweet corn, and green onions. Package icing provides fast initial product cooling, but the rate slows down after the ice in contact with the product has melted. Some disadvantages of icing are a 50 to 100 percent increase in package weight, and the higher cost of water-tolerant containers. Top icing generally refers to covering a load of produce with finely crushed ice inside a refrigerated truck or railroad car. When using this cooling method, it's important not to block air circulation inside the transport vehicle. Most products of tropical or subtropical origin are susceptible to chilling injury, which occurs at low but above freezing temperatures. Handle chilling sensitive commodities such as peppers, citrus, melons, and tomatoes at above chilling temperatures to avoid injury. Chilling injury reduces the quality of the product and shortens shelf life. You'll recognize the symptoms of chilling injury by, for example, the dull surface color of bananas and a lack of ripening of tomatoes. Maintaining a high relative humidity in the storage environment helps control the rate of water loss from stored produce. Loss of water causes a loss of quality, such as wilting or shriveling, texture, and increased sensitivity to decay. Relative humidity can be increased by adding water vapor to the air surrounding the commodity, decreasing product temperature, using waxed cartons, or by adding vapor barriers, such as polyethylene liners, in boxes. Only high-quality products free of damaged or diseased units should be stored. Storage containers must be clean, adequately ventilated, and strong enough to withstand stacking during storage. Commodities stored together must be capable of tolerating a common temperature, relative humidity, and level of ethylene. Storage facilities should be thoroughly clean prior to storage and be kept clean. Produce should be inspected regularly for signs of decay, water loss, warming, or chilling. These practices will help to maintain product quality and reduce losses by minimizing the buildup of pests and discouraging the spread of diseases. Storage facilities should be protected from rodents by keeping the immediate area outside the building clean and free from weeds and trash. Rat guards for raised storage buildings can be constructed from tin sheeting. Concrete floors and screens on windows, drains, and vents will help prevent rodent entry. Waterproof sheets or wooden pallets placed on the floor beneath sacks or cartons of produce help prevent dampness from reaching produce. Waterproof sheets reduce the chance of fungal infection, while wooden pallets improve air circulation under the produce. Here you can see that ventilation in storage structures is improved when air inlets are located near the bottom of the room on the shaded side of the building, and air outlets are at the top. For commodities sensitive to ethylene, the ventilation system should provide one complete air change per hour in the storage facility. Any type of building used for storage of horticultural crops should be insulated for maximum effectiveness. An insulated building will require less energy for cooling and maintaining desired temperatures. If the structure is cooled evaporatively or by using night air ventilation, a well-insulated building will stay cold longer.